Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Small Steve here once again. And as you can see, the build is now done. At least for now anyway. It'll no doubt continue to change and evolve over time. But for now, at least, it's done. If you missed the first video, or the previous video in this series, uh, I talked about all the components that are in this build. I won't go over all of that again. And then I installed things like the radiators, the reservoirs, uh, the water blocks, pumps, and all that stuff. But since then, I've been busy measuring, cutting, heating, and bending PETG tubing uh, to connect it all up. And there were a few modifications made along the way, so I'll cover those in this video. Uh, but for those of you hoping to see any kind of benchmark results, temperatures, and all that kind of stuff, I won't be covering that in this video. This is just about finishing off the build process. So if you missed the previous video, I did run into a few issues there. Uh, one such issue was the top 420 millimeter radiator, which could only be installed with two of the three 140 millimeter fans, which was disappointing and kind of spoiled the look of the build. And it seemed plenty of you agreed that the missing fan wasn't really a compromise worth making, but with no alternative options available, I was kind of stuck on that one. In the end, I just couldn't take it anymore, so I decided to channel my inner modder and get a bit creative. And while I was happy with the end result, I did regret it for a good hour or so while I was uh, carrying out the mod. So the problem is the telescoping trays. They're just not flexible for the top mounted radiator. It's basically a 420 millimeter a radiator template and it just locks you into that position. There's no wriggle room at all. You can't move it a little bit left or a little bit right. It is fixed into the position that you saw in the previous video. And this meant that I couldn't just move it back so it would avoid hitting the, hitting the fittings up here. Uh, so yeah, I've had to do some modifications. Therefore, my only option was to remove the top telescoping tray as well as the telescoping arms and then jerry-rig the radiator into the top of the case. And it turns out using this method, I could have installed two radiators side by side if I really wanted to. Anyway, the goal here was to fit the 420 millimeter radiator with all three 140 millimeter fans. And with my modifications, this was now possible and boy, does it look much better. So what was involved in these modifications? Quite a bit actually, had I done this before I installed everything, it would have been a hell of a lot easier, a, a significantly faster process, but because I'd already installed the front mounted radiators with all 16 fans, and then done all the cable management for the 32 cables associated to said fans, I wasn't really keen on undoing over an hour's worth of very painful work. This was a problem because it meant that the top telescoping arms or cabinet, drawer runners, whatever you want to call them. Removing them was extremely difficult. Getting the one at the far end wasn't really a problem. Getting this one here was a big problem because to do that properly, you really need to remove all this stuff as well. And as I said, I wasn't willing to undo hours worth of work. So I had to basically get a pair of long nose pliers, wedge out that gap there, sort of force that out a bit, stick them in there and undo the screws uh, using long nose pliers in what was about a 10 millimeter gap. So I was doing about a quarter turn at a time and it took me roughly 10 minutes to undo each of the two screws. Anyway, the process was extremely painful, but it did manage to get a bit worse once I realized that I had to undo another four screws, two of which were extremely difficult to get at because they're above the radiators here and I didn't have a screwdriver that would fit in that gap. Even my shortest one just wouldn't. So again, long nose pliers, quarter turn at a time, and I undid those two screws, which allowed me to take the top uh, aluminum and glass panel off. And then by doing that, I could then drill some custom holes in what was left of the top panel to mount the top radiator, which you now see up here with all three 140 millimeter fans installed. So I was very happy with that. With that sorted, it was time to spend a few hours working on the tubes and work out how I was going to run everything in the case. With two CPU blocks, two separate GPUs, two reservoirs, two pumps, and three radiators, uh, there was plenty to do. That said, I'm not bragging or anything, but this thing was a one-take wonder. I didn't redo a single bend. Uh, there certainly could be one or two there that could have been done a bit better, but I am under the pump on this one as I've got some GeForce RTX testing to do. So that being the case, this is no time to try and get all the bends perfect. I figured that next time I do a coolant flush, I could take a crack at perfecting a few of these runs, 
but for now this more than serves the purpose. Once all the tubes were connected up, I began to fill the reservoirs with the coolant, and in the end, each took two litres of fluid. I then connected the pumps to an external power supply, so a third power supply, not one of the two Corsair units that are in the case, and I started my leak testing. Uh, as usual, I focused my attention on the water blocks because that's where most of the damage by a leak, or at least most of the mess can occur if you are unfortunate enough to have a leak. Thankfully for me, no leaks, so I continued to top up those two big reservoirs there, and I kept an eye on uh, all the fittings and things around that area, and 20 minutes later, uh, it all appeared to be good. But then I did notice a red puddle on the desk, just at the bottom of the case here, it started coming out. And yeah, I went into full-blown panic mode, started checking everything and couldn't work out where the leak was. Uh, thankfully, the VGA blocks were fine because it's just a nightmare if it leaks down the back of those and goes over the PCB and everything else. Uh, all the CPU blocks were fine, so I'm like, okay, probably not as bad as I thought. Uh, and anyway, I couldn't find it, was looking everywhere. It turns out it was the adapters, or one of the adapters anyway, in particular, on the reservoirs. So. Uh, it just wasn't done up tight enough. It was done as tight as I could do it by hand. So I wasn't sure if, yeah, tightening it up a bit more with a tool would help or if I was going to have to drain all the liquid out, try and work out what was wrong, whether the, the washer had been crushed. Uh, that can happen. But as I said, I only did it up finger tight and as tight as I could by hand anyway. And normally that means they're okay. Uh, if you use tools, you can crush them and then they fail. But anyway, it turned out that a my long nose pliers came to the rescue once again. I put them on there. It was like not even a half turn. The leak stopped. I noticed the other one that with the clear liquid that was just dripping ever so slightly. Gave that another half turn. That stopped that. Cleaned it all up. Did all that. Got rid of all the residue and all that so I could do my leak testing again. And now it's fine. It's been a week since then so I'm pretty confident that it's solved. But I'm not too uh, sure what is going on there because all the other fittings, not a problem. I just did them up, yeah, with my hands, no problems at all. And it's just the two fittings, the, I think they're 45 degree angle fittings that I used off the, or it's the outlet of the radiators. And both of them didn't seal very well at all. They had to be done up super, super tight to uh, avoid bleeding, basically. <laughs> So not sure what the go is there, but that was the only problem I ran into, and thankfully my long nose pliers were able to solve that one for me without too much fuss. Anyway, crisis over, I got on with the build, and after a day of further leak testing, the two loops were rock solid, and I moved on to the all-important RGB lighting. I have 20 Corsair ML series fans to configure, three water blocks, and a number of Corsair Lighting Node Pro light strips. Since this is a set piece, I don't really want flashing lights and all that nonsense, so I've gone with a simple blue and red static theme. The plan was to eventually dye the clear water blue, but I'm starting to think that I should potentially run both loops with clear liquid, that way I can change the colour scheme at any time using the RGB lighting. Anyway, not sure how it will change over the next few months, but I do have a few ideas. For now, all the ML fans have been set to blue, and so have all the CPU and GPU blocks. Then the Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB memory has been set to red, and the LED light strips have also been set to red, and I think it all looks pretty awesome. I have to admit, the build ended up being a lot more enjoyable than I initially thought it might be. At first, I was kind of regretting all the RGB lighting as the wiring was just insane, but it did ultimately end up being a lot of fun. The Corsair 1000D is about as perfect a platform as you can get for a dual system with dual loop cooling. Having said that though, there are a number of things I would like to see change or improve in the next version, but overall still a very epic case. So my list of things that needs to be addressed with Corsair's 1000D. Obviously the first thing is the top radiator tray that caused me the most problems. And I think the solution's simple. They just need to use the method that was used in the 500D. Uh, much more simplistic design, more flexible, uh, cheaper to implement, so I think that's the way to go. Another big issue I ran into that really annoyed me was the ATX power supply uh, enclosure down here. You can't access the ATX power supply from the back of the case, at least not very easily. My hands certainly can't. And towards the end of the build, I realized I needed a few more of those awful four pin Molex connectors, and I couldn't connect them to the ATX power supply because I couldn't get in there. And you might think, well, how do you get to the ATX power supply? 
The answer is you have to remove this entire shroud from this side. And of course, there's now an ATX, oh, sorry, an ITX build on top of that. It's the 8700K rig. So I would have to, I'd have to completely bleed the clear liquid loop. I would then have to undo all the piping. I would then have to remove the graphics card. I'd have to remove the motherboard. Basically disassemble the entire ITX rig to connect a few more cables to the ATX power supply. And in such a massive case, that's just unacceptable and a huge, huge design flaw. I don't know how that one happened. It's There should be ample room at the back to get in there and then slide the SFX power supply out, then the ATX power supply, attach the cables you need and put them both back in. But unfortunately, that is not an option. Then the next thing on my wish list for the 1000D version 2 would be to make this top panel removable. As you can see, I haven't fixed mine back into place yet. Uh, doing so would actually be very difficult, so I'm going to come up with some other way to secure that there, or just leave it sitting there for now, because doing those two screws underneath is a complete nightmare. But it makes the case so much easier to work with if you have top access, so it's kind of crazy to me that I didn't come up with some system to make that removable, because just cable management up the top there, things like that are a lot easier when you can just come in from the top and do all that, and I found that great for installing the light strips and all that sort of stuff. And really all they need to do to make this uh, easy to access, easy to remove, is make the glass and aluminium a one piece deal, stick those two together, then make a tab here that you push them into, clips them in, it sits down, and then at the back there's a tab with a couple of screws to screw them in, top panel is easily removable then. So that's something they definitely need to do for the next revision. Making the front panel removable would also be ideal as well, but you can get away with that one a bit more easily. I also think it'd be quite cool to make it possible to mount three and a half inch drives in the top of the case. Uh, there's loads of spare room there, and by making the top panel removable, this section of the case is very easy to access. Everything else is great though. Uh, the ability to install massive front mounted radiators is great. The cable management basement on the back side is also excellent. The plethora of fan mounting locations is great. And the IO panel is also very nice. In my opinion, the case looks good and the build quality is second to none. Even the price isn't bad, $500 US or $700 Aussie for a case of this size and quality, in my opinion, is very reasonable. So there's just a few things that I would like to see addressed to make this the ultimate super tower. Now, they aren't particularly hard things for Corsair to do and they aren't expensive. A lot of them would probably end up being sort of cost saving things. So I really hope they can do that. But anyway, for now that concludes the build portion of this video. Uh, I thought I might try something a bit different for this one and that is to read the comments from the previous build. Uh, video which was about a week ago. There's some good comments on there, some interesting things and some stuff that I thought I could address. So if you're interested in that, stick around. But if not, I hope you enjoyed the build and I'll catch you again next time. First questions from Jonald. Steve looks like a dwarf beside that beautiful humongous beast. Yes, yes I do. It's, it's a ridiculous case, but that's kind of the point though, isn't it? Next question is from Ahmed. Hopefully I said that right. Apologies if I didn't. Uh, just one question. <laughs> How the hell do you lift that? It's so huge, or it looks so huge, sorry. Well, not easily, basically. And I suppose the uh, solution would be to involve a few friends in the process of moving this beast because yeah, it's just ridiculously heavy. Complete the build tipped the scales at 61 kilograms. I myself weigh about 90 kilograms, so I can pick it up and move it around the office, but I wouldn't be taking it to too many LAN parties. Next question is from Steve. Uh, please tell me you're going to use purple fluid and that would be sexy as hell. Uh, you're right, it probably would be and at some point we might even find out. For now it's the red and clear. I was thinking of going fully clear, uh, you know, for transparency as Nvidia would say, but yeah, we'll have to see what happens in the future. Next one's from Francisco. This thing is huge. But can it run Crisis? I knew there'd be one of those in there. Uh, well, it can very easily play two copies of Crisis simultaneously, as there are two systems in this rig. And the 2950X can probably play a few copies of Crisis at the same time, though the GTX 1080 graphics card probably wouldn't love that. Next one's from Omar, I think it is. Uh, I'd drill some holes at the top and put the radiator three centimeter closer to the rear. And that was exactly what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, as I said, with the 
uh, standard gear in the case that simply wasn't possible because your fans would be blocked by the, the template thing that we had. I should grab that actually. One second, I'll go get it. So here is what was in the top of the case. And as you can see, if we drill some holes back here and shift the radiator back, well, certainly possible, far from ideal, because you'd really want to have to cut all this out. It's a lot of messing around for what doesn't really solve the problem that well. If you're going to go to all that time and effort, you just end up doing what I've ultimately ended up doing. But yeah, a good idea. It sounds easy enough, just isn't really possible. So you'd have to end up doing what I did. And an hour or so later, those few holes ended up getting drilled. Okay, next question. Sorry, I'm not going to butcher the hell out of your name on this one, so apologies, I am a very simple man. Uh, why would uh, you pair the i7 with the Vega GPU and the AMD CPU with the Nvidia GPU? A fair enough question, there was quite a few uh, questions very similar to that one, and the plan was to do exactly that, install the Vega 64 card with the Threadripper CPU, put the AMD gear together and then do an Intel Nvidia combo for the gaming system. But then I realized you wouldn't see this beautiful RGB block. The GeForce block isn't RGB. Uh, EK didn't send the RGB version of that block for whatever reason. Maybe they didn't have it in stock. I don't know. I didn't. I was very happy with what they did send, so I wasn't going to uh, start asking them why they didn't send particular bits of hardware. But yeah, very pleased with what they sent me. And the Radeon block is certainly the more showy block. And since this is just a display system, as I've said, it's a set piece, I wanted the best looking block on show, so that's why you've got the Vega block there. It's not going to be used as a system anyway, as I've said many times, it is just a set piece, so it doesn't really matter what's paired with what, because unfortunately it won't be used for gaming or anything like that. I know that sounds like a shame and a waste of hardware, but it's a set piece, makes the set look a bit more interesting for people watching the videos, and it didn't cost me anything because companies involved. Okay, next question is from Just The Facts Ma'am. I don't know why the comments are so tiny on my phone. It's like size micro font. Anyway, uh, wow, that thing makes you look like a dwarf. Yes, I'm a normal size person, but I realize this does make me look like a dwarf. Uh, definitely wins the most ridiculous, ridiculously sized PC award. Uh, yeah. It probably would if there was such a category. I think Corsair would take that as a sort of a, a mission accomplished. I'd say that's what they set out to achieve, the most ridiculously sized PC case. Voila. Uh, Daniel says, really wish you guys would do a live stream for this build. It would be just nice to watch in slow pace and you might get a, a lot of donation in Super Chat. Uh, try it sometime, just make sure it's a good build and not a budget low end. Now the budget low end ones I find more interesting sometimes. Uh, anyway, really not, I, I, I like the idea, probably not appropriate for a build like this. Uh, it's the kind of stuff we would, this kind of stuff we would do for Patreon members because it'd be like a 20 minute stream here, half hour there, hour there, because I didn't just sit here and do this in one go. Uh, I'd be just sitting on my backside working on this for days on end because it was, well, just over a day anyway, probably if I hit it in one big go. Uh, and you sort of get a bit, I do anyway, I can benchmark for days on end, no problem, but doing this kind of stuff, I don't know, I enjoy it, but it's not something I could really do a lot of, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I very, very much enjoyed the build, and I do plan to do live stream builds on the channel, I think Tim's done one before, Tim and I were going to do like a build off at his place, and we will do that soon, we're going to build him a new desk, so it will support two builds, and yeah, you'll see that on the channel in the future, uh, just bit more professional than what this would have been. This was just a bit of messing around here and there. So hopefully that answers that one. All right, next question's from Bert. Uh, soon building a PC will be a job for plumbers only. Uh, well, you've got the all-in-one liquid coolers. They're very easy to install and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, water cooling isn't really, it's not rocket science. It's certainly not that difficult, not as difficult as some people make out. I suppose it depends on you know, if you're good with your hands, hands on. I, f I find it very simple. I was, I did my first hard shoe build about two years ago now, and I'd heard nothing but horror stories about how difficult it was, but we had the opportunity to try one. I thought, why not? And I was shocked by how simple it was. Uh, but I've done actual plumbing around the house and stuff like that. I, kind of the same, sort of. Uh, you don't want leaks in either situation, so I suppose they're similar in that sense, and they both have a liquid running through the, the pipes or tubes. 
Yeah, not uh, not super difficult. But if you wanted to get into it and you were concerned about how difficult it is, just start with soft tubing. Uh, the, you can even buy kits, so it has all the bits you need. So you have to try and work out what you need, and that's a really good place to start. I think I started with a, a soft tube kit, and they're dead easy. You can't really mess them up. Super super easy. Uh, and then once you've you know evolved from that, maybe set up your own custom rig and still use soft tubing, but work out what you need and all that kind of stuff, and maybe incorporate some incorporate some VGA blocks. And go from there and then eventually get to the hard tubing. The hard tubing though really, I don't know, it's not something I would probably run in my own computer, my personal computer, unless I was willing to put a lot of time and effort into the maintenance because it can get a bit like that. Uh, also, I personally like to upgrade and change and mess around with my PC and this doesn't really allow for that. It's kind of like build the PC, it is what it is and you want to go more than a year ideally without having to change everything but maybe some people do like bending the pipes and changing it constantly so it depends what you enjoy doing anyway i'm rattling on a bit hopefully i not even sure what your question was but anyway you don't need to be a plumber to build your own pc like this certainly not next question's from fishmonger <laughs> I was going to comment on the impressive photoshop skills on the thumbnail and then i watched the video uh, it is a bit like that hard to believe this case is real basically what he's saying in the last video the thumbnail was a picture of the case with me sitting next to it i don't know giving the thumbs up or doing something and it looked absolutely ridiculous because it looks absolutely ridiculous as you can currently see so anyway not photoshopped this is really ridiculous <laughs> next question is from joshua uh so your mini itx system isn't probably faster than the real system in gaming because vega 64 versus 1080 uh they'd be pretty much the same the gtx 1080 and vega 64 are neck and neck i mean the 1080 comes out a little bit on top depending on the spread of games overall it is a little bit faster but it doesn't exactly murder vega 64 so there i would say they're close enough in terms of gaming performance uh, the 8700K is obviously a better gaming CPU, so I think that's what you're hinting at, but I paired it with what's arguably the slower graphics card, though there's very little in it. If you're playing at 1440p, again, it doesn't really even matter between the two CPUs. You're going to see a very similar result. 4K, they will be identical. Uh, but the 8700K is the better gaming CPU. I'm not trying to say it's not. But it's a set piece, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but if you were to use this as a streaming PC, it would be pretty awesome because you'd have the 2950X to do your encode your, for your live stream, and then you could just game on the 8700K and it will be in one big rig. So it's kind of like the ultimate streamer's dream. Stream dream? Cisco says one of your front fans is 90 degrees off. So it's this fan here. So all of them I've got the correct, or, uh, the, the correct way around one of them is just on its side it doesn't really matter that's certainly how it's staying i'm not going to change it now but yeah i did notice that as well when i built it and i was like huh eh, nah it'll be fine <laughs> next question is from martin why does it look like the top radiator could be moved back or left toward the io away from the front radiator okay uh <laughs> well i've kind of covered that it just because of the because of that being fixed in a place you can't do it so yeah that one's been covered but yeah it's just due to corsair's design i wish it had been a bit more flexible next one is from jocko <laughs> but can it run crisis uh, you're beating the punch by almost one week on that question mate <laughs> parasite adam 666 says dude your pc looks like it's going to beat you up for your lunch money well if this thing fell on you it would be taking much more than just your lunch money <laughs> Okay, the one you don't see says, uh, looks like a competitor to Skunkworks on Jay's Two Cents channel. Who? Skunkworks? I'll have to Google that one after the video. Question here from, I'm gonna call you Lamb. Hope that's okay. Uh, Lamb says, <laughs> Lamb says Linus's one is better. Not sure what to say to that one. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Linus really built his one. Okay, next up we have K E. Uh, I'm not gonna bother. Sorry. Again, simpleton. Uh, this cooling is beyond overkill. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. 
Okay, next question is from Mobius. Uh, it's a bit of a long one here, an extremely small font, so bear with me. Uh, is push-pull really necessary? For anyone building one of these for practicality, you could make more room for activities. Okay. I get the feeling that this case is largely only used as a showpiece. What gave you that feeling? Uh, in most instances, though, and then yeah, it keeps going on. Okay. Uh, well, yes. It is overkill. Push-pull isn't necessary. Uh, I said multiple times in that video that it is overkill. The build is ridiculous. That is the point. And I also said multiple times that it is a set piece, so it isn't meant to be for any kind of practical application. Tech Ride says, looks like a great case for a LAN party. Well, I, I kind of have to agree, it's perfect really. It's a two-in-one system, so you and your 100 kilo beefcake mate can carry it to basically any LAN party, and you could quite literally crush your opponents with it. Okay, next question. Again, sorry, I'm going to skip the name on this one. Uh, the CPU seems really weak for a $7,500 machine. It looks really nice, but the specs seem too weak and the cooling is overkill. Yes. Uh, why don't you use a 7980XE? That's better than a 2950X in every way. Or $500 more and it's possible to get an epic 32 core CPU. Or I could just use the 29. 90WX, if I wanted to do that. Uh, 128 gig of RAM, sure. Uh, 1080 Ti, sure. Uh, this looks more like building a PC for fun more than building a PC for workstation job. Well, anyway, the, the comment does go on. I'm just going to stop it there. But yes, this is much more like building a PC for fun because that's what I did it. As I said many, many, many times in that video, this is a set piece. So I wasn't it's not a build guide, it's a set piece. It's going to sit here and where it was sitting previously. I've just jazzed it up a bit. It's going to be featured in every video. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see how many people in the comments section of this video say the cooling's overkill and the specs don't make sense or something along those lines. Anyway, but thank you for your question or your comment. Thank you. Oscar said, pipes? Coolers? What is this? An oven? Uh, well, I don't know about you, but if you stick your head in an oven, you're probably not going to see too many pipes or coolers, so don't think this is an oven. Damien says, why is there an ITX 8700K in there too? Um, I, I don't know. Um, I guess because can. Okay, Bezig said, I... Th <laughs> I remember this comment. <laughs> I thought poor people like AMD because it's cheaper and not much worse. WTF is this then? <laughs> I actually replied to that comment. I replied with, that's odd. And at this point, I have to say I have no further comment. Okay, next comment. Tony, that's one huge number crunching beast you're building. Looks beautiful already. I uh, can't wait for you to get it complete, fill it up and running. P.S. Are you sure the table uh, is able to handle all the weight uh, you're adding? Well, first of all, thank you very much. I uh, hope you approve of the final product and enjoyed the build. Uh, the table has been checked by an engineer and been given the all clear. So hopefully when I move that over to here, we're all good. Next question is from Streamline. Uh, you better hope that thing never leaks, otherwise you're gonna flood your entire house. I have to say that is probably a, a genuine concern at this point, uh, which is, well, I'm probably more worried about killing the components in it, but there is a lot of liquid in there if you came in and uh, it's almost impossible for it to all leak out, so. But anyway, it's still a funny comment. Yes, there is quite a lot of liquid that could come out and it would certainly spoil my day if I walked in here and half my floor was covered in coolant. Uh, we have just the facts ma'am back uh, and this time they've commented and you would need some power tools. I well, love the channel but sometimes you gotta troll a bit. I can't even remember what the previous comment was but I recognize the name. Anyway I assume that was meant to be a reply to an earlier comment perhaps the one we read or another one but yeah if you going to troll it probably would be best to work at how the reply function uh, works first. 
Paul says, I'd be interested to see what the total cost of the build will be. Uh, well, Paul, the cost of the total build was in the title of the previous video, and it was $7,500 US. Uh, it would accumulate quite a bit of cost if you added a few more graphics cards and things of that nature, storage and whatnot. But yeah, as it is, the base build was 7500 US. TSA Trash says, I wonder how noisy all these fans will be. Uh, it's still really cool. The electrical bill must be a big problem. Uh, basically, to answer the first part of your question, it's extremely quiet. The fans only need to run at like 200 RPM, maybe not even that, to keep everything chilly, as cool as it's going to get. Uh, so yeah, running them at a much louder RPM to make a whole heap of racket wouldn't make too much difference because there's just a huge amount of airflow and a lot of radiator. So yeah, works out quite well. Uh, Wee says, brilliant build. I thought it was going to be for a client of yours, but it's a showpiece. Uh, wish that much money. Uh, wish I had that much money to spend on marketing. Well, first of all, I'm not professional enough to have any actual real clients. The good news is, though, it didn't cost me a single dollar because YouTubers that run tech channels get everything for free and it's really easy and a really cushy life. Uh, okay, I'm taking the piss a bit too much there. But yes, I didn't pay for any of it. It was all technically free, depending on how you define the word free. Uh, companies like NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, uh, MSI, EK, they all sent their hardware to me for free so I could be put in this system because this system is going to be on display in every video. But yeah, it was a lot of work to make it happen and I don't really get any personal benefit from it apart from the fact that it looks nice and hopefully is a cool set piece for you guys to look at. Okay, the next one is from Ranch. The name isn't even logical. I don't know. How is it not logical? Hmm. I'm sure I don't need to explain this to a lot of you guys, but I'll do it anyway. It has a Core i7-8700K CPU, which is based on the Coffee Lake architecture, pretty commonly known. And then we have a, a Threadripper CPU. So the Coffee Lake CPU is meant to be for the gaming portion of the build. The Threadripper CPU was meant to be for the productivity portion of the build. So you sort of get the best of both wor worlds, a core heavy CPU and a really low latency, awesome gaming CPU. So. The genius behind the name was I took the coffee from Coffee Lake and then the Ripper from Threadripper and then I put coffee in front of Ripper and that gave us Coffee Ripper. So hopefully now that I've explained that it is a little bit more, a little more logical. Okay, last question is from Lucian and it's, he's meaning this is a joke. This isn't a serious comment. He's saying, you're copying Paul's build, aren't you? Question mark, smiley face. Uh, plagiarism, smiley face with many mouths. So yes, very, very funny. I do really enjoy Paul's work and I enjoy watching his content. I watch a fair bit of it uh, when I get time. And yeah, he's a real, he's a, he's a really nice guy, chilled out guy, just really enjoyable to watch, really relaxing to watch. So yeah, enjoy Paul's work a lot, and he did do a 1000D build. Uh, he took the easy way out and did some soft tubing. Now nah, it actually looks really good. It's a practice. I think he's using it as a test system, which is why the uh, soft tubing makes a hell of a lot of sense. In any case, it's a really cool looking build. He goes through the process really well. So I'll chuck a link to that one in the video description. And I think that is a good point to wrap this video up. Go watch Paul's video now. But if you did like this video, hit the like button. Uh, and if you have any comments or suggestions about the build, uh, let me know. Let me know what you think about my radiator hack and just the build in general. Love hearing from you guys. And let me know if you liked this little comment bit at the end. I'm not going to do it a, a whole lot, but for these kind of videos, I think it was kind of good to look back at the previous video in the series. Anyway, before I waffle on any longer, I am your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.